only for you. You don't even have to share it. Lakum in the beginning, you don't even have to share it with anyone. It's yours. Just yours. Especially designed for you. Custom built. Walakum fiha ma tashtahi al Walakum fiha ma And maybe something else will come in your mind later on. You'll call for you'll order something. When you order something now, it takes a while to ship, right? Immediate delivery in paradise. And Allah mentions this amazing gift, this certificate being awarded to the one who lived their life with one commitment, that their master is Allah. That's it. Rabbun Allah. And they remain committed to that. May Allah make us all those who do this, this great news at the time of our departure. And may Allah make us of those who visit each other in the paradise. <coughs> now, very briefly, after Allah Azza wa says all of this, He adds something so incredibly profound. He says, all of this the angels say, and then Allah says, Nuzulam bin Ghafur al-Rahim. Nuzul. The word Nuzul literally means that which descends. It's used in Arab tradition, when you go to somebody's house, those of you that are from Indo-Pak background, you know, Jaivani, right? You go to somebody's house, you don't get the dinner right away, you get a little snack before, right? That's Nuzul. It's the little stuff before the big stuff, right? Just to warm your appetite. So the ayah says you got Jannah, you got whatever you want, whatever you call for, and Allah calls that what? Nuzul. That's just the beginning. That's just what your, what your limited minds can, can hope for right now. And that's just the beginning in Jannah. The real rewards are something that can't even be captured in your imagination. And we know this because Allah says Nuzulan, SubhanAllah. Nuzulan. The, Allah Azza wa Himself tells us, مَا لَا عِنُ The Messenger tells us. What no eye has ever seen. What no ear has ever heard. There are, there are rewards waiting for us there, SubhanAllah. But then He adds these two beautiful words, غَفُورٍ and Rahim. This, this initial descent of gifts are coming from who? From, from the Lord who is two adjectives, or two names, exceedingly forgiving. In other words, these people had made sins too. They weren't perfect people. Those who declare Allah as their Lord, they're not perfect. You know, all of a sudden they don't become immune from sinning. <coughs> they don't become perfect in everything that they do. They still make mistakes. But that declaration and that commitment is enough for them to earn Allah's forgiveness. And then Rahim, constantly merciful. That commitment is enough for them to receive Allah's endless mercy. In Ghafoor and Rahim. May Allah make us from Now, the last thing, as, a, as one who un- internalizes this, this is such a huge gift. It is only human decency that when you come upon an endless treasure, that is, you could never have enough of it yourself. Human decency, you would want it for those you love. You don't want it just for yourself, you also want it for those you love. Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us in the next ayah, when, pe- when people really internalize this, what is a natural consequence of internalizing that our master is Allah and these rewards are waiting for us? And the natural consequence is inviting people. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ who, who is better in terms of their words? Who is better in terms of speech? Than the one who called to Allah. Than the one who called to Allah. And this is, I don't want to, there's, there's far more in the ayah, but if I just elaborate on this much, inshallah ta'ala, the job of the khutbah is done. Who is better in speech than the one who called to Allah? We don't understand this fully nowadays. We figure the one who calls to Allah is the shaykh, the khatib, the speaker, the da'i. These are the people who call to Allah. It's not talking about me, it's talking about these guys. <coughs> right, the scholars, the da'i, the speakers. But you know what? This calling to Allah, Allah has made so easy and so universal that no matter what your life situation is, you are, you are responsible to call people to Allah. If you're working in a business and one of your Muslim business co-workers, they're cheating. They're cheating in, in their customers, right? They're giving them less weight. When they weigh the, weigh the vegetables at the grocery store, they give them a little less. They do tatfif al mizan. You remind them, you know, Allah says, wa'idu lil mutafifin. Ultimate destruction is going to fall on those who just cheat a little bit off of business. You work at a company, a tech company, and your co-worker, your Muslim co-worker, leaves five minutes before five o'clock. He signed a contract that says he should leave at what time? Five o'clock. He says, the boss is not here, it's okay, I can leave five minutes early. You're reminded, no, Allah is still watching. Allah told us, fulfill our promises. Fulfill your covenant. You're calling people to Allah by doing that. Calling people to Allah is not something limited. Anytime you remind people of their obligations as slaves to Allah. There's a, you're in college. 
And so one of your, you know, one of your friends whose parents pay their tuition, the this, this student is, you know, they're, they're cutting classes, and they're not attending properly, and the agreement between them and their parents is, the parent says, I'll pay the tuition, and the student and the child says what? I'll attend class. But they say, my dad doesn't know I'm cutting. No, he doesn't know, but Allah knows. Come back. You fulfill your agreements. This, this is also calling to Allah. It's as simple as that sometimes. It doesn't have to be, in, you don't have to have a degree in Sharia to call people to Allah. You don't. There are some aspects of this deen that are for the people of knowledge. We leave them for the people of knowledge. If somebody asks you a question about Islam that you're not qualified to answer, you should know your limitations. Go to the scholar. Go to the person of knowledge. But that does not restrict you from calling people to Allah in everyday situations. You are just driving with your family and your mom just starts going off on some other auntie. And this total ghibah session. What do you do? Mom, no. We just came from the masjid. We don't want to burn all of our good deeds. Or if you don't want to say that, be condescending to your mother. You know what you do? Just change the subject. How about the magic? <laughs> change the subject. Call it, you're calling people to Allah by stopping a sin. That's what you're doing. With, with our action, with our speech, with our demeanor, with our attitude, we are to call people to Allah. And Allah says, who is better in terms of their speech? than the one who called to Allah. And wa amila salihan and acted righteously. And finally, فَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِ And he declared, there is no doubt I am from among the Muslims. And this is the last thing I'd, I'd like to highlight in this text. It's very beautiful and important. Usually we think of someone who calls people to Allah as sort of above. Is a great above. It's like these guy, this guy, the one who's calling me to Allah, or call, reminding me about Allah's book, or the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This person is somehow less sinful than I am. He's a better person than I am. Words don't make us better than each other. We don't. I am no better than you. You are no better than I. You have problems. That means I have problems too. You have temptations. That means I have temptations too. None of us is above this. So the one who calls people to Allah, one of the dangers of that is, people start putting the da'i on a pedestal. They start thinking of them as above normal. And so this da'i, the one who calls to Allah, who can be better in speech than he, Allah says, and he acts righteously, so action is critical. But then he also declares that I'm not special, I'm among you. In nani min al I'm from the Muslims. This is twofold. What he doesn't hide is Islam when he declares da'wah to other people. Where do you get these ethics from? You know, one time I was on this flight, brief story and I'm done, inshallah. I was on this flight and this, this older lady, she was talking to one of her uh, nieces or something about some wedding. So I figured, how do I, talk, how do I talk to her about Islam? So I was like, you know, I, I brought up marriage. So, marriage in the family? And so the next two hour flight, we're talking about marriage and how, you know, it's, it's customs in this society and stuff. And I just shared something, you know, the way we do things is so much simpler. And I just shared with her some beautiful things about the, the marriage, the concept of marriage in the sunnah of the messenger so without bringing up Islam. She said, wow, that's really deep. That makes life so much easier. You guys live so much happier a life. Where did you get this stuff from? I was like, God? <laughs> Wait, I never read this. Let me show you something. And I, I, we, we talked about the book of Allah. But the idea of this deen, this reminder being relevant to every situation, every circumstance. There is not a situation around us in which we are to hide our Islam. Amen. We're Muslims and we have something good to offer you. Islam is not about we're better than you. Islam is, let me show you something that's better for you. It's better for you. We are there to offer something for the people. Ukhrijat linnas. Khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. We are the best of nations derived for people. So Islam, this, this, this invitation to Islam should not turn into something of an ego fight. <coughs> that when someone reminds you of it, you get a little your ego gets you know, in the way. I'm not going to listen to you. Who are you to tell me anything? But at the very heart of it is reminder that reminds people that what they are being told is of their own benefit. May Allah Azza wa make us of those capable of benefiting from reminder. May Allah make us of cap capable of giving reminder to others, especially those first and foremost within our own families. May Allah soften the hearts of the members of our family and protect them, protect all of them from the different kinds of trials and tribulations Amen. and temptations that surround them. May Allah Azza wa Jal reunite all of us in a place much better than this dunya, in this paradise. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi ladhin aslafa.
خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد تقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر